what the hell yet another uh, what is Bitcoin video uh, but I suppose I had to give you my take on what I think is Bitcoin Bitcoin as you may have heard oh it's like money or oh it's a network or it's a it's something that you can trade in markets well why does it have this this undefinable way of being called why is it so many things at once well Bitcoin is a decentralized system for the trans for the transfer of abstract ownership I'll repeat that you will transfer electronically your concept of ownership from one person to another from one computer to another what is an abstract concept of ownership if you have a, a stone you think it means something to you it has some value and uh, if you give it to somebody else this this value has been transferred now you don't own that and us humans tend to think we own things for some reason that we can own things and it makes things have work this uh, abstract notion of that things can belong to you that's so weird if you think about it so anyway transferring things because they mean something to you can get really inconvenient with this, when these things are big uh, when they need to be transferred quickly so hey we invented money right we said all right I will believe and you will believe let's all believe that this piece of paper is worth that thing and that thing is worth these many other pieces of paper or shells or whatever so eventually we got to the US dollar and now we are agreeing that this worthless piece of paper because it is worthless it is not a real dollar it's a promise that the Federal Reserve will pay you a dollar if you go there uh, you should try um, and guess what this bank is allowed to print as many of it as it as it can well it doesn't necessarily print it because money in our time is created because of the passage of time because people borrow money to each other and they say well when you pay me you're gonna have to pay me something more that's the interest right right so where does that money come from well it has to come from somewhere right so it comes from them these guys they are a corporation they're not really the government but they have government power and complete sovereign sovereignty or authority over how much money is created President Obama cannot go and tell them hey do this no or don't do this and the same with Congress they can do whatever the hell they want and um, so what they are doing every month is uh, they're borrowing a lot of money <laughs> to the government and uh, it's I think every year for the fa past few years they've uh, borrowed four trillion dollars uh, when we knew that the economy was going so bad um, most people really don't have jobs anymore uh, they kind of stopped searching for jobs and that's why the stats look better um, eventually where does it stop you know uh, eventually somebody's not gonna pay just like people couldn't pay for the houses and the whole market collapsed so it's a worthless piece of paper but shh, don't say anything um, people believe in this shit and the place where you store it usually is a bank because you don't want to have all that cash on you it's dangerous so in Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin was inspired by this monstrosity of a system that we have with money and when the market collapsed so this guy said what if we could hold the money without those banks that are borrowing and doing disasters and who are stealing from people how do we do this and the guy has solved a, a, an amazing computer problem which is that you are able to write something you know computers can copy files fairly easily right it's, they're great at copying data you can copy you know anything many times but he solves the problem in which you write something and no computer can erase it or copy it differently like you can trust that that has been written and that nobody else has messed with it he figures how to do this it's a huge problem to solve as a consequence of solving the money problem and the way Bitcoin works is that all of us are kind of like accountants 
or notaries for every transaction. So every time somebody spends money or pays someone else, we all know about it. And the only way of messing with that is that the majority of us starts cheating and rewriting the transactions. That's the only way. So you are writing transactions to each other and every time somebody spends some money, everybody knows immediately. If somebody tries to fake that transaction, he's gonna be one against many or hundreds of thousands against millions. They can't. We will always agree in majority. So now we get to have um, our money, our abstract transfer of money, not in paper. It's in these books. Because that book you can trust blindly. Because it happens also that the money doesn't move from one, one account to another unless you give permission with your signature. This signature is not like signing a piece of paper that anybody can fake. This signature is a number that is really, really, really hard to find. To give you an idea, there's, um, imagine all the grains of sand in the planet, all, of every beach. And one little grain is your account. And then to open it, you need another number that is, uh, uh, from another planet that is slightly smaller and also has beaches and then you have to grab that other uh, grain of sand and if you have these two grains of sand that's your signature very hard to find these two grains of sand well bitcoin addresses are almost double the grains of salt the salt in all the beaches in the planet i hope that made any sense so basically it's really impossible for anybody to guess this number and steal your money so how do you steal numbers you know you have to Basically, it's like winning the lottery, but probably a million times harder or even more. So your money is safe. It's in numbers. It doesn't need an institution. As long as we believe, we all believe, the money is in that book. Just like we believe money is in banks or US dollars. So this property on which money does not move elsewhere unless you sign it is pretty important. Because if you think about it, when you put your money in the bank, these motherfuckers can take money out of you of your account without you saying yes you can take my money no you can see that oh fee here and you know they start taking money out of you if you want to take the money out of the bank you have to pay them for your money that's fucked up but of course we don't know it's fucked up until we see bitcoin uh, we kind of don't like it but what are you going to do about it, right? Uh, not have a bank account? Sure, you could do that, but it would be very inconvenient. So then, the other thing about Bitcoin, is that nobody will mess with your balance unless you have the two little grains of sand, your, your key, and you sign that shit. It's not going to move. So when you transfer money on Bitcoin, which is just writing a transaction in this book, and we all agree into it, um, it's instant. And it's as easy as sending an email, and it costs just as much as sending an email. But you need a network of computers to do this for you. So you need computers to be checking these numbers. Uh, so this idea of the book, we can um, verify that it actually works. And it does. And therefore, I think it's more real having money on Bitcoin than on paper. Because this paper is worthless if you think about it. Whereas Bitcoin actually has some value. Creating Bitcoin is quite hard. And also, there's another property to Bitcoin that it's like gold. When we agreed to create Bitcoin, we said that there would be no more than 21 million coins. So it behaves like gold. In the sense that there's only a finite amount of, amount of gold in the planet. So... If you have a piece of Bitcoin, you have a piece of that economy. And the world keeps going. A lot more people are born every year. More companies are out there doing their work, creating things, new innovation. All these things have value because the us monkeys, remember, we like to value things. And we have to pay each other for helping each other. And guess what? There's only 21 million Bitcoin and more people are coming in and more value is created. Uh, the moment people figure out the US dollar is worthless, and the moment that Bitcoin becomes stable, why in the hell would you keep your money in a bank? Why wouldn't you just take all your money, buy some Bitcoin, and keep it safe in an impossible to find number that only you know? How the hell are they gonna take your money? 
why should your money be paying fees to be maintained or transferred or and and think about this if you wanted right now to go to your bank and take all your money imagine all the shit that you need to do like they're asked for your ID they probably have you sign some some forms because now you are being watched for money laundering Lord knows what you're going to do with your hard work money motherfuckers so no with Bitcoin if you want to move all the fucking money on your account or you want to move just one cent you can do it for free pretty much just cents maybe five cents that's what it costs and you can do it without permission of anybody and nobody needs to know who you are because your account is just a number how cool is that shit if you don't think this is one of the best inventions we've had on mankind let me keep blowing your mind a little more so we've been saying that these numbers are locking coins that represent money but what if we said that some of those coins represent other things and we all shake hands and we agree yes uh, if we paint this little cent here in the book with this color with this number uh, it's going to represent a share in my company or it's going to represent uh, one kilogram of gold that I have on this warehouse and you can you can check it and you can anytime give me that Bitcoin uh, unit and I'll give you your gold so now it's what I said at the beginning it's an electronic system for the transfer of abstract ownership so here's a PS in case I didn't convince you about why you should start thinking or getting into Bitcoin maybe you're watching this video because you want to know about it first right so let me appeal to your greed Bitcoin was worthless when it started. This guy had to convince the other guys about the idea of this ledger, this book, right? So please, you know, how would you make them convinced? How would you convince them? Um, you have to incentivize them, right? And if you're creating a system of money, well, you should give them money. So this guy um, said, you know what? These pieces of paper you're writing on this spiritual book, which I will call the blockchain, it's going to be called a book, a uh, uh, block. So you're writing on a block all the transactions, and until one of you will find a number that will have certain properties, like having I don't know four zeros to the left.
and appealing to your greed, what do you think is going to happen when Bitcoin's price becomes stable and people understand how safe it is? What do you think they're going to do with their bank? What do you think is going to happen to all the US dollars back then? Massive crash? So I didn't mention it, but by now you've figured out that this is not controlled by government. It's controlled by everyone who is part of the network because we all have to agree on the blockchain. So, if you cannot control money supply, how do you control the people? Because this is the way to control the world is money. The federal bank, who has absolute power, controls the world because they control money. They can put money where they want it to flourish. They can take money where they want it to collapse. They can create policies, tax policies. Whatever. They control money, they control people. But what if people figure it out? And now they want to move to Bitcoin. You have two options. You either take control of Bitcoin or you destroy it. The one way to destroy it is to have more computing power and start fucking up what's on the book. That's it. It will collapse. But that's very hard. But it's possible. Maybe the, the government does have so much computing power. But the moment you start putting computers like that, difficulty goes up, then the miners say, get greedier, and they gotta buy more computers, it would be an arms race that I don't think any government can win. Unless they just commit all the resources to it. And then the other thing you can do is control the, the, the amount of money that's in the pool already, which means you have to buy it. Can you buy all the Bitcoin in the world in one day? Let's say, can you say, oh, Bitcoin is worth $6 billion right now. I'm just going to put $6 billion and buy it. No, you cannot do that. The moment you start putting a lot of money in it, the price is going to go up. And your $6 billion are going to run short in just a little bit of Bitcoin. And you will just have made a lot of people richer and harder to get in. So, I doubt they would be able to buy it. Um, and if they bought it, I mean, whoever has Bitcoin now will be immensely rich. And what do you think will happen to the transfer of ownership in this world? Who are going to own the streets of Manhattan and Hong Kong and Tokyo? When the dollar starts to crash and the market starts seeing that a lot of people are moving into cryptocurrencies and they see the value of cryptocurrencies going, where will all that wealth that is currently represented in dollars is going to go? They're going to have to pay top dollar for the Bitcoin that the early adopters are holding right now. It will be a massive change of power, or at least the empowerment of a new um, elite. So right now Bitcoin is only like 400 bucks. What do you think you should do?